What's up YouTube, Lambo here, and today I have a replay against Hero Marine, in which he plays mech, he opens 2cc battlecruiser with a lot of Hellions, trying to apply a lot of pressure, and then he goes into Cyclone mech, so if you have any trouble against those type of builds, this is the perfect game, I just played it, so it's fresh in my memory, and I'll just talk over it like I usually do. Um, we're starting off here on Dragon Scale, so this is one of the better maps for Terran, but it's a very open map, so it's not necessarily the best one for mech. But since it's short, it makes defending the early harassment of Terran a little harder than usual. Everything arrives a little earlier, uh, obviously bio-tank timings also arrive earlier, but the same also applies for Cyclones. Uh, cyclones are closer to their base, so it's a little bit harder to run by. So overall... Um, it's a it's a decent map for Terran, but it's very open, which means that you can set up surrounds very nicely and get a lot of surface area. In the engagements on Dragon Scales, if you send your first Overlord straight across, you can check for the Reaper, and if you don't see the Reaper, you can simply not make any Zerglings, which is really nice. Uh, this works on a bunch of maps, but I do it here on Dragon Scales, since it's relatively safe to do. If you see there is a Marine, you can run back to the to the high ground cliff next to where I put, I positioned my Overlord. I'm just playing the Advanced Clash Opener, is what I like to call it. Clash Opener obviously being the opener uh, popularized by Elazer and me. Um, we made that one when we were in Korea, I think 2017 or 18, 17 I think. And um, basically there there is one thing that we do differently now, which is we make the Overlord before the hatchery. <clears throat> Other than that, it's super standard. He actually goes quite aggressive here with the Reaper, but my Queen movement wasn't perfect. My Zergling movement wasn't either. I think it, it must have been possible for me there to catch the Reaper. But I messed up a little bit, and I was just on autopilot making drones, so I forgot the Overlord. Usually you make the Overlord at 33 first. So I am Supply Rock here at 36 for quite a while because I made all the drones and I didn't have the Larva for the Overlord, so I made the Overlord too late, which means the three drones are a little earlier, but... The extra drones, as you can see here from the larva, are way later, so it's three drones uh, effectively mining later than usual. Well, it's six drones overall, but three extra ones because three of them mined a little earlier. Either way, not the end of the world, a supply block like this. Then this supply block at 44 is on purpose, then we go double overlord, and now we just make all our queens. We're lacking money a little bit to start all our queens. Uh, just based off the Hellion timing alone, I already know this is a 2cc opener. Um, because with three with three CC you can't start the Hellions right away unless you make uh, you just go factory and then you don't go for a starport or a second gas, which is very uncommon to begin with. But usually, if you go for two CC, the SCV that gets rallied um, it builds the factory, and if you go three CC, the SCV that makes the depot builds the factory. So it's a little bit of difference there. If you learn the Hellion timings, it it can help you know exactly what's up. For example, if the Hellions were even a little earlier, you can tell if it's if it's gas first. Also, if they open with a Marine into Factory, it's also always early Hellions. Very often, when they do these builds, they run by four Hellions. Because in a lot of build orders, Zerg doesn't have speed at that point yet. So, if you pay attention to the minimap and you see the Hellions leaving at 10 seconds earlier than usual, that means it's gas first or well, Marine Factory. Obviously, Marine Factory being a little bit more obvious, and you can just go across the map to scout for it. Since there's no Reaper on the map, so if you made the initial Zerglings, you can just go there. I split my Queens 3 and 3 at the front, and now we're trying to focus Fire Hellions. I messed up there a little bit. I should not have let uh, all of those Hellions go through, but one Queen for 3 Hellions is well worth it. So overall, it's still a pretty good trade for us. And yeah, he, he's scanning here, but we can instantly replenish that Creep Spread. We're now making spores at around the time uh, necessary for a battle cruiser. Now, gas first battle cruiser could uh, jump in uh, right about now, so that would have been a, a little bit uh, too late for that. But we already know it's not gas first. And right now we're just making drones. We're making drones on two gas, and now we're gonna add all the extra geysers when our mineral line, our mineral lines are saturated. I split my queens from three control groups into two because I want to have enough queens in my main base to defend the battle cruiser, and at this point I'm making roaches so I can commit the queens for the battle cruiser defense fully, which is very very important. If you don't have roaches, 
you need to have some queens at the front against the Hellions at the same time as defending the battle cruisers and usually against the battle cruiser as you can see here. Here Marine teleported towards my third base and now he's in between my main and my third. So you need queens on both sides, which is very hard to do if you also need queens at the front for the Hellions. Um, you could also overmake Zerglings, but that's that's not really what you want to have because if they go me mech, they can have eight and sometimes even ten Hellions. And if you don't have the constant DPS output of uh, roaches or queens at the front, then the Hellions can simply poke away at the Zerglings and it's very, very annoying. If they get one good shot off, any number of Zerglings can, can lose against them. So We're just playing it very safe here. We didn't really take a lot of damage. It's very important to always run away with the drones wherever the battlecruiser goes in instantly because the, all the Terran wants to do is focus fire drones, get as many drones as possible. Here we can see that he goes for Yamato, so I know, okay, it won't just be a single battlecruiser. It would be very uncommon to go single battlecruiser into Yamato. We also pretty much know that it's mech because of the amount of Hellions that my opponent made already. So there's there's no way this is a bio follow-up. Usually you should scout. Uh, the way you scout this is just you run and link in to see if there's Marines. But if it's more than 10 Hellions, it's very unrealistic that it's, it's bio against a top player. So uh, also here Marine just has been playing a, a ton of mech lately. So it's it, it's it's pretty it's pretty normal. At this point, I could, for example, also run in my Zergling at Hero Marines third, and there sh there would already be geysers if it's Mech. If it's Bio, there wouldn't be double gas there. So a bunch of tells. At this point, we're making a couple of corruptors. We're making eight because I'm sure my opponent is committing for more than one BC. Eight should be enough for two BC BCs. Uh, for a single BC, I would still go up to like five or six. Um, if, if you're sure it's only one, you don't need any more. Uh, against three, you need like 10. You don't really need that many more Corruptors. Uh, obviously, at, at this point, I'm just running by Banelings, hoping that he's not paying attention, but we'll get some mining time and we get a, a turret out of it, so not the worst trade. And now I'm hiding the Corruptors, because Corruptors cost more than Queens, until the battle cruiser fires his Yamato, and then we, we force a teleport back with the, all eight Corruptors still alive. At this point we're ahead for sure because we basically managed to drone up quite nicely with a with only a minimal amount of units. Not entirely minimal, I just I, I played it relatively safe but we didn't take any damage against a relatively committed opener. So we're in a good spot at this point. Um so now the game plan against uh, Hellion Cyclone is quite simple. You just split up your forces and you try to go for surrounds. At this point he wasn't looking when he was going up a ramp and I was looking at it so we're, f we're just focus firing down Cyclones one at a time, and just like that, uh, the game is pretty much over. <laughs> I shouldn't say this on YouTube, because now people are going to tune out. <laughs> but uh, don't don't tune out yet, because I, I can still explain to you a couple of uh, ways of how you're supposed to close out games where you're ahead and how you're supposed to play in general. So in, in general, my game plan here would have been to um, max out on Ravager Link Bane, and then either try to attack with mass bindings towards his fort base or try to run by and at the same time uh, the well one way or another I will try to blow up the fort base pretty much you, you can also try, try to go for a full army full on army engagement at this point I'm trying to kill the CC I'm checking for the fort base I'm very surprised that there is no fort base I was thinking there would be a planetary for sure but now I see that the fort base actually uh, flew out to the other location and at this point, we just need to make more links. I'm just reinforcing with Zerglings, basically. I'm morphing all my Roaches into Ravagers. And having Link Bane at the front. Now, if you want to be Roach heavy, you don't need to morph that many Ravagers. It's important that if you go for Ravagers, you have enough Zerglings and Bane links at the front to tank, because Cyclones right now destroy, and I do mean destroy, um, Ravagers. Ever since the new patch. They... they deal with Ravagers very, very nicely. So you don't want to fight with the Roach Ravager against Cyclone. In that case, I would rather have just have Roaches with the speed and for movement, for example. So now I'm setting up another surround. The weakness of the Cyclones, whenever they're pinned, they're just bad because they simply just killed one unit. The strength of the Cyclone is that they can continuously kill units without dying. But if you go uh, and surround them, they, 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 they're going to just trade ineffectively. Pretty much always. Also, if you attack them and they are forced to stand their ground and fight, that's usually where you also win the game against Cyclone. So in this case, I already know I have a 
quite a sizable lead, so I just go into his natural. He doesn't have enough aliens anymore to kill the banings quick enough, so I can also just go after the SCDs. At this point, it was pretty much over. So, GG. Nice game. Um, and very, very standard. So, if you have problems against BC, this is basically how you play it. Usually, I always split up my queens. One in the main, one in natural. Three between natural and third. A little bit forward, and then three at the third. But then the moment you realize it's BC, you want to split the queens four and five and have a couple of roaches ready. Let's say five roaches for safety and then the safety links behind it should be enough for any number of aliens. And if he goes, teleports at the front and comes with helibats, you just move all your queens together. And yeah, that's about it. If you have a clean early game against Battle Cruiser, you should always be in a good position to close out the game. If you are below diamond, I think Ravager Bane might not be the uh, absolute best composition because you need to move command the banings and it's not that easy you need to uh, control click them and move command them forward so it might just be better to go road traveler with corruptors for the battle cruisers and then you can have a brutal transition but just say, say on road traveler corruptor i think that that will do the trick thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video bye bye